Hello, it's Andy on another adventure. I think the last time you saw me, I was aboard an American Airlines MD-80 aircraft as they were preparing to retire them. And since then, I've gotten glasses, I've lost 40 pounds, and I'm here in Florida. Now, if you're wondering why my mouth isn't matching my voice, that's because it was incredibly windy outside and the microphone was only picking up the wind and not my voice, so I'm just gonna overdub this. But anyways, I'm here for a Falcon 9 rocket launch. NASA contracted SpaceX to launch some stuff into space for them, and the NASA social team was kind enough to invite me along to take a behind the scenes look at the entire process. As you can imagine, this started with a bit of a bus ride. We got on the bus, went past the visitor center complex, and went right into the Kennedy Space Center itself after a brief security check. Now, off in the distance, the whole time we were driving in, we could see this massive building in the distance, the Vehicle Assembly Building, which we'll get to in a little bit. But our first stop was at the Press Complex. Now, the Press Complex is where Walter Cronkite famously said that the building was shaking underneath him during the Apollo 8 launch, uh, and we immediately were ushered into a briefing room for our first scientific briefing. So the launch we were there to witness was a resupply mission to the International Space Station, which if you didn't know is a low orbit laboratory basically. So not only would they be bringing food and supplies to the astronauts, they would be bringing science experiments like the one these guys are holding, which was a pod that would help plants grow entirely in space without any need for water or supplies. Then after the briefing we went outside and looked at the vehicle assembly building some more. So from the briefing, we went to the International Space Station Processing Facility. Literally anything that has gone to the International Space Station has gone through this building, and therefore there are laboratories and experiments ongoing from literally all over the world in this building, which was really cool. We were still talking about plant growth, and specifically uh, active plant growth, where there are monitors, where there are water pumps, so on and so forth. But it's really, a, the, the studies that we saw were about how we monitor the growth of a plant to know when it needs more soil, when it needs a different nutrient balance, so on and so forth, uh, in order to, to take that obligation away from the, uh, the crew on the ISS. Well, and then this guy with a really sweet beard was telling us why this was so important in general. I mean, if it's, if it's astronauts on the International Space Station, we have relatively easy access to them, but they were thinking the moon, they were thinking Mars in the next decade, and it will be essential to grow your own food then. On our way out, we got to see one of the coolest doorways in the world, which is the doorway the astronauts will walk through as they exit quarantine on their way to the launch vehicle. And they also have the coolest astronaut parking only parking spot in the world. And wrapping up day one, we got to attend the official NASA What's On Board press conference where we got to ask questions and hear from each and every experiment provider for that mission. These things ran all the way from heart cardiomyocytes growing in reduced gravity loads to the Delta Water Faucet Company wanting to do microgravity experiments on water droplet formation. Good morning, it is day two of the NASA social event and I am in the car and I'm on my way to sorry that's ways um, I'm on my way to the Kennedy Center visitor complex now they like our tour today doesn't really start until this afternoon uh, so we were given basically carte blanche to do whatever we want they gave us some free passes at the Kennedy Center visitors complex uh, just to go visit and learn some more about space, about rockets, about science. And I'm actually, before I do that, I'm going to pick up a piece of photography gear that I forgot to bring along with me. Uh, but thankfully, Amazon does their little locker thing. So there's a locker right next to my hotel. Uh, so I'm just going to go pick something up and get ready for what I'm hoping is the launch tonight. Uh, but as I flip the camera around, you can see that it does look a little bit cloudy and the, uh, the clouds are supposed to uh, blow through, but when they blow through, they're gonna be blown through by a lot of wind. Uh, so that's not really the best for a rocket launch. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed that we're still gonna launch tonight, uh, but you just never know. So I picked up my photography equipment and made my way to the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex, which is basically like Disney World for space exploration. It's truly incredible. If you're in the area, you have to go. My first stop was obviously the Rocket Garden because who doesn't love looking at rockets and rocket engines? And you just get a sense for the scale of these things. That's really hard to, to get a sense for when you're just viewing a rocket launch from a TV. And then you can even see like a, a lunar orbiter uh, from the Apollo mission days. But 
really the best reason to come to the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex is the Space Shuttle Atlantis. Now, when you go to the Space Shuttle Atlantis little building they have there, uh, you see some cool inspirational quotes, and then you have to sit through a couple of informational videos, and you're sitting there wondering, okay, why am I sitting through not one, but two videos? But trust me, it's worth it. The unveiling of the Space Shuttle Atlantis is one of the coolest and emotional things I've ever seen. There was barely a dry eye in the entire place, because of the emotional impact of that moment. And seeing something that had been in space from that close was truly a dream come true. It's not just the shuttle either, so they have like a virtual cockpit that you can sit in and press buttons and make space noises until you realize you're in your mid-30s and there are children waiting to sit in that seat. Uh, then they have exhibits on how the astronauts live, so where they sleep and where they exercise, so you get a really good impression for what life is like on board. Uh, and, and some of the other exhibits that I thought were really cool is they have one of those astro vans. So when the astronauts would leave that doorway I showed you earlier from quarantine, they would get in the astro van. The astro van would take them basically to the space shuttle or to the Saturn V rocket. And then what left the biggest impression on me, yes, the shuttle was amazing, but there was a very touching remembrance hall uh, for the astronauts whose lives were lost in the Challenger and Columbia disasters that had personal effects and mementos from those people. And it really, really gave a human perspective on such a tragic event. And then it was time for the official NASA tour to resume. So we got back on the same bus and we, and you remember the vehicle assembly building from yesterday that we were all admiring from a distance? Well, today we got to go inside of it. Now, the vehicle assembly building is absolutely massive. It's 538 feet tall. It's the largest single story building in the world. And it was used to construct the Saturn V rockets, the space shuttles that the astronauts would use to go into space. And we even saw one of the mobile crawlers that would take the assembled space shuttle out to the launch pad. I mean, you cannot overstate just how massive this building truly is. And about the only thing that could possibly be cooler than going to the vehicle assembly building was going to an actual launch pad. We went to launch pad 39B, which is the actual launch pad used for the Apollo 10 mission, which was the dress rehearsal for the Apollo 11 mission that landed on the moon. And it just kept getting better. We went from that launch pad to the actual launch pad being used that night. The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket was just sitting there. And I know the video isn't that interesting because it was far away, but I am a photographer and I wanted to have enough time to capture the best picture possible. And I think I did. So we went back to the bus stop and then we took a couple hour break because the actual launch wasn't until that night, near midnight in fact. And the camera that I use to shoot these videos with, it's not the best in low light, so I really chose to focus on the photography aspect to make sure I could capture the pictures that I wanted from the event. Um, so I'll show you some NASA footage of the event as well as an Instagram story of everybody in that little press area where we watched it from completely going berserk and then some amazing pictures that resulted from the launch. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket and Cargo Dragon on the final flight of the Dragon 1 spacecraft, taking research designed to improve life on Earth and lead discovery in space. Well, back at the hotel after an incredible experience. I really enjoyed showing you everything that I went through. I was in awe the whole time, and that launch was just unforgettable. NASA, I'm so grateful uh, that you picked me to join this NASA social. To everybody I met, thanks. And uh, now I wait like three hours and then get ready to go to the airport and fly home. So uh, headed back to Dallas, we'll see everybody soon and uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. You have no idea how much I enjoy putting these together for you all. Take care.